Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sri Tips here. There's been a little bit of confusion about how to tell the difference between a gold-plated piece and a gold-filled piece. Now that I've got a nice camera that does close-ups real well, I can show you some examples of the markings. This is a watch, 14K gold-filled, right on the back there. This is a ring, and inside there, this is 10K gold filled. I've also got a uh, pendant here, a pin. And down on the bottom down here, it says 120th 12K GF. That's a marking for gold filled. Uh, not all gold filled pieces are marked. Most usually are. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rub some of the gold filled material on this 14K gold filled watch onto my touchstone here. And we're going to add a drop of acid to it. And you'll notice that the test is positive for carrot gold. It doesn't dissolve away. That could be a bad deal for someone testing their carrot scrap for refining. For example, if you have a piece of gold filled material with a thick coating of gold over brass, like this is, and it tests positive for carrot gold, like this test shows, then you might mistakenly throw this piece in with your carrot scrap and that would skew your numbers for your inquartation. When you calculated how much silver to add or copper to add to do the inquartation, uh, the gold content would go way low, too low, because you got brass under here. If you threw this in thinking it was gold, carrot gold, solid carrot gold, and then you'd end up with problems when you did the nitric boils. All right, what I have here is a piece of gold-plated material. Uh, if you notice, it will stick to my magnet. See that? Normally gold, carrot gold stuff doesn't do that. So what I'm going to do here is to illustrate how gold-plated material reacts with this test acid. I'm going to put a drop of the acid right directly on the uh, gold plated piece. See how it immediately starts to bubble and boil. It turns green. That's because the acid is eating through the thin gold plating almost immediately. That's how thin the gold is on there. If you put the uh, test acid on the uh, gold fill piece here, nothing will happen because it's a thick coating of carrot gold over brass. So it'll just sit there. And it will not react. I could leave that on there all day and wipe this off. And it would not get through that thick coating of 14K gold over that brass. All right, I'm going to wipe this off. It's been sitting on there for over a minute. As you can see, it didn't react at all. Now what I'm going to do is file a little bit of the metal off here to expose the base metal under the carrot gold. And now what we'll do is dip this. Oh, let's see, where are we at on the camera? I'm gonna dip that place that I just filed right there in this acid on our stone. If I can do it without getting it all over the... All right, there we go. Now, if you look, You'll see the acid immediately attacks the base metal underneath 
the brass, and there are, uh, a distinct border becomes visible between the gold, the thick plating of carrot gold over the brass. See it there? It's a very well-defined border. Let me wipe this off. Now you can see it real good. See the brass underneath? And you got a thick coating of gold. That's how thick it is. You can actually see it there. And uh, that's how we test for gold-filled material. If it's not marked like this one is, then we just file a little bit off and then dip the file mark into our acid and watch it and see what it does. The acid immediately begins to dissolve the brass that's underneath that carrot gold. It turns green, starts bubbling just like it is right there. And then uh, when you wipe it off, you can see a distinct border between the two metals. All right, this will conclude the video that demonstrates how to tell the difference between gold-filled material and gold-plated material. Thanks for watching.